Hi everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate you all tuning in again to see what's going on. And yes, I am kind of known as the rock and roll journalist. So I thought I would, you know, give you a sample of some of the things I do in my studio here. <laughs> That's uh, the sound of my Marshall amp over here. So that's what I like to do. <laughs> uh, I am in a rock band called MTC and the Rebel Saints here in Seattle. So besides being a journalist, I like to rock the house. And uh, that's one of the songs I've been working on. So that's what I do with my time here in the studio, but also I do other things and I've been, of course, I'm executive director for Democracy Watch News, so I've been covering a bunch of stuff going on around the country, uh, mostly threats to democracy, unfortunately, and censorship in public schools and all sorts of things that are not good signs for democracy in this country. But um, today I actually testified before the Washington State, I was scheduled to testify before the Washington State uh, House of Representatives Committee on um, Housing and Human Services and that had to do with uh, a bill called HB House Bill 2009 and that has to do with uh, a guaranteed basic income proposal that is before the state so what is a basic uh, a, uh, a basic income uh, a guaranteed basic income or universal basic income is what it's called in some places well it you know, this is something that um, Norway has and other countries have. And what it does is it allows each person to get a basic income um, and helps to alleviate poverty. So I know all the conservatives out there are saying, well, you know, we don't want that kind of socialism. But, you know, in a place like uh, Seattle, Washington, where the uh, there is no rent control and rents have skyrocketed and the cost of housing is, you know, just prohibitive, to anybody who's not a billionaire at this point, or a millionaire at least, um, you know, we have some problems. We have mass homelessness. There are tent cities all over the city, just like there are in other major cities across the United States. Uh, people don't have adequate health care or adequate housing. And uh, there's a lot of poverty, and the middle class is disappearing across the country. You know, no help from the neoliberals and all their crazy, you know, international trade agreements that outsourced our jobs here. But uh, you know, it creates a situation where people need some help and uh, we need to help try to eliminate, eliminate and alleviate some of this poverty that's going on. Meanwhile, I live in a state that has no income tax. So, uh, you know, people like Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Howard Schultz, you know, from Starbucks fame, uh, they do just fine here because they're making billions of dollars per minute or no, no. They're making billions of dollars. They're making, you know, probably millions of dollars per minute as I speak here. And, uh, you know, they don't have to pay an income tax. So it's great for them. We also have a 10% uh, sales tax in Seattle, which is totally outrageous, of course. And, um, you know, adversely affects working people and the poor, of course, because every time you go buy something, you have to tack on 10%. So uh, uh, the most regressive tax system in the country, let's put it that way. And... So the, a guaranteed basic income is something that's been tried in other parts of the world. Um, it's currently being done in Tacoma, Washington on a city-wide basis because there is a group of mayors across the country who are, in favor, uh, who are in favor of a guaranteed basic income and so they've been pushing that idea. And in Tacoma, there are certain people who are getting $500 checks every month. Um, of course, you know, we had the stimulus package uh, with the Obama administration and now we've got you know we've had these stimulus checks during the pandemic and um, in one case you know one of the studies I saw showed that 12 million people were lifted from at least temporarily from poverty just because of those um, those stimulus uh, checks so it does make a huge difference and you know for people who accuse it of being you know uh, a socialist communist conspiracy or something you know where all these you know 
basically what you hear from the right wing and conservatives is, you know, well, those poor people, you know, they're lazy. That's why they're poor and living on the streets. So we don't want to give them free handouts. That'll just make them more lazy, you know. Well, in reality, um, even if, if you live in Seattle, even if you uh, are working full time, you still can't afford the rents here. So there you go. San Francisco is the same way. New York City. Uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, it's the same way in all major cities across the country. So the cities are becoming uh, refuges for only the rich and everyone else has to leave town basically. So how do you keep, pe keep people working in your city when they can't afford the rents? And in Washington state, we have no rent control. It's prohibited on a statewide basis by our state legislature. So a city like Seattle with skyrocketing rents and um, billion dollar developments like Amazon headquarters and Google and all these other companies moving here. Uh, Boeing has been here forever. Starbucks, Microsoft, you know, they've raised the real estate prices so high that the average working class person, of course, can't afford to live here, even though they may work in the city. So we had carpenters on strike uh, during the summer because they couldn't afford to live in the place where they work. Um, and that's a major problem all across the country. So as we see what's going on, we see more poverty, more homelessness and uh, the disappearance of the middle class while uh, these wealthy people get richer and richer and it's becoming a wealthy oligarchy you know where only billionaires can afford to to survive in the united states and that is ridiculous i mean this country was built uh, by working class people and in my father's generation you could get a decent uh job you know especially if you had a good union uh, working at a factory or other so-called working class jobs and still have a relatively comfortable middle class lifestyle. You could afford to buy a house, you could afford to buy a car, maybe a couple cars, a boat, go on vacation every year, you know, and put your kids through college. Well, that's not true anymore. It's really a struggle for the average person. You ask any new couple uh, with a family how they survive. They both, both parents have to work. Maybe they have multiple jobs. Um, and they're making, even if they're making a decent wage, it's usually not enough to really afford a nice lifestyle in the United States right now. So a guaranteed basic income is one of those ideas. Uh, Norway has it. There are certain qualifications there. Um, you, you know, you can't be a criminal and, you know, they actually require you to vote in Norway in order to qualify for that. And, you know, that's something that in the United States we debate about all the time. Um, even Walter Cronkite in his book written way back in the 1990s said that he, we can't really consider the United States a democracy when only 40% of the eligible voters vote. Um, only 40% of people who are eligible to vote actually bother to cast a ballot. And so we have decisions, you know, and people getting elected by a minority of the population, small groups who have a lot of wealthy corporate backing, you know, to run these campaigns, and they end up controlling the dialogue and controlling the Congress, usually controlling the White House and everyone else. And, you know, Wall Street money has a lot to do with that as well. So uh, when people are poor, you know, their main concern is how to take care of their kids and provide for themselves. And so... Uh, they're not very civically engaged. They become very apathetic and cynical about the way that politics work in this country, so they don't bother to vote. So do we really have a democracy? You know, I mean, we're losing it, basically, folks. Um, I work with Democracy Watch News every day. I try to concentrate on issues um, about threats to democracy, threats to freedom of the press and freedom of speech. There's all sorts of censorship going on in our public schools now where they're trying to ban the teaching of critical race theory and all sorts of other things, and especially in southern states like Florida, Georgia, Texas, where, you know, there's a right-wing conservative uh, majority there. And mostly, you know, they're against teaching black history in schools. Uh, they're trying to suppress uh, people of color from voting. You know, it's like uh, we're going back to the Jim Crow days, and that's really sad to think what would Dr. Martin Luther King think today about what's going on in this country. He'd probably be calling for mass demonstrations and civil disobedience. That's my theory. Um, but, you know, it's really sad to see us regress this way in some states. Now, some states are tending to be more progressive on the West Coast and in the Northeast and trying to move ahead in that direction. But a lot of the country is actually moving backwards towards a more McCarthyite, uh, red-baiting kind of uh, mentality. Uh, where, uh, you know, the right wing rules and anybody who wants to talk about um, LBTQ plus rights or uh, people of color gaining um, more civil rights, you know, they just get stepped on. So it's really sad to see that. 
Um, I sidetracked there a little bit, I admit it, but um, it all has to do with these problems with democracy in the United States right now. So back to my original statement, a guaranteed basic income is one of those ideas and it has been introduced in Washington State as a proposed bill. Um, I do want to give a, 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 a pitch here to support independent and alternative media because you know I know a lot of people say that they're very um, cynical and distrustful of corporate media but they still only watch MSNBC, CNN and Fox every day which is really tragic because you're not getting even part of the whole picture there. Um, all of these networks are owned by major corporate interests and they're not very interested in you know the average person or you they're interested in their advertisers and you know Hollywood stars and you know talking heads all day long so if you really want to support alternative and independent media, um, and by the way, Reporters Without Borders ranks the United States 44th in the world in terms of press freedom, which is tragic. If you go to rsf.org, um, you'll see the World Press Freedom Index for this year, and it, yeah, it ranked the United States 44th. So that means that there are 43 other countries around the world where there's more press freedom and it's actually easier for a journalist to do their job. So we are really uh, falling short on press freedom in the United States, folks, and no one wants to talk about it. The corporate media especially doesn't want to talk about it because they're, they're afraid that it undermines their credibility. So you're not going to hear them ever mention that, uh, that report, um, the World Press Freedom Index by Reporters Without Borders. I try to talk about it all the time, which is one reason why you know you don't see me in corporate media that often because they don't want to hear it. Um, they're kind of embarrassed and ashamed and not willing to admit that. Um, but I know it well, and one of the reasons is that we have a corporate media monopoly here, where uh, most of the media is owned by just a handful of major corporate companies. Um, there are uh, There is alternative media in the United States, but none of them have any budget for promotion or advertising, so you never hear about them. And they're all trying to survive on a shoestring budget. Um, some of them are, are nonprofits. They don't have big-time angel investors you know supporting them or big corporate people backing them so you never hear about them and there are a lot of great journalists in the United States um, doing great work that you never hear about because they just don't get the the uh, exposure or the creds from any any of the corporate media so it's really a, a sad situation but if you want to support me then you can definitely you know check out my YouTube channel uh, Mark Taylor Canfield just Put it in the search engine and you'll find me. There's only one Mark Taylor Canfield out there. Um, I have almost 600 ad-free videos on my channel. So there's plenty of stuff to watch. There's plenty of journalism, my music videos, um, animated cartoons, political cartoons that I did. Uh, I produced uh, my own radio theater, Nick Savage Private Eye, where I played uh, a, a private detective in Seattle in 1947. It's kind of film noir style um, as an audio play. Um, and yeah, there's there's also oh, hundreds of free movies on my channel that nobody seems to know about. But if you're looking for free movies, uh, there are a lot of classic movies. I just put up a bunch of new Irish and Australian movies there, which are kind of cool. Um, yes, actually, there's a lot of great movies not made in the United States. And I really appreciate um, a lot of Irish cinema especially when they're talking about, you know, the the troubles, as they call it there, you know, the conflicts between uh, Northern Ireland and and Britain and, you know, with the, the, the conflict that's been happening there for a long time now. There's some really, really tragic and also heart-rending and, and beautiful films that have been made about that. Um, so I highly re recommend those. Um, you can go to my channel and find them. Go to my playlists and you'll see all those... Uh, movies. Um, also, every week I appear as a guest on the Jeff Santos show. He broadcasts out of Boston. He's a really great guy. Has some amazing guests on his program. Um, great people like the iconic classic uh, historian and educator Harvey K, who we all love, who um, wrote a book called FDR on Democracy. He talks a lot about Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his vision for America. The guy who brought us Social Security, which the conservatives seem to always want to take away. Um, and yeah, he has people like Herb Boyd, who's a, an excellent and inspiring educator and author and editor uh, from New York City, who also spent some time in Detroit. He's great. You got Robert Craig, the Wunderkind, 
uh, who's with uh, Wisconsin Citizen Action and other groups. Um, we've had you know Nina Turner, who's amazing on there. She's running for office again in Georgia, so check her out. A lot of great people show up on that show, um, and they talk about issues you won't hear anywhere else, I guarantee you, because they're very cutting-edge people. They're very well-informed, intelligent, um, well-educated people, so they're talking about things that no corporate media is going to talk about, and that's why it's so refreshing to hear Jeff. And uh, he, yes, he broadcasts nationally from Boston. He's a great guy, a good friend of mine. Um, I also do the Tom Hartman show a couple times a month. Tom is also a good friend. I've known him for years. He also does some Im pretty amazing, intelligent, progressive media on his program. You can see it on Free Speech TV or hear it on radio stations all over the world. You can watch it live, um, streaming on YouTube and other places on his his uh, website, uh, TomHartman.com. Jeff Santos, his show, The Jeff Santos Show, you can find at RevolutionRadioNetwork.com. It's very easy, Revolution Radio Network, and you can listen to it live as he streams there. You can also listen to all of the archived programs, and uh, great stuff. And I'm on every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, that's 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, Jeff's show is on every day, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, noon to 3 p.m. Pacific Time. Tom's show is... Uh, at 9 a.m. to noon, uh, every Monday through Friday, uh, on the Pacific Coast, on the West Coast. Um, you can also hear it on the East Coast three hours later, uh, or actually three hours earlier, or however that works, yeah, three, <laughs> three hours earlier, actually, they're ahead of us by three hours, so, um, yeah, he's everywhere, so you can hear him all over the place, or watch him, too, he, he also um, has a television show. It's a television slash radio show, so you can either listen to the audio on radio stations or podcasts, or you can watch it live streaming on Free Speech TV or YouTube or other places. Um, and then there's Democracy Watch News, which is the organization that I work with. I am I am executive director. I also do a lot of reporting for Democracy Watch News, um, and you can find us at democracywatchnews.org. Go to our website. You can see our news articles. Uh, you can also link to our podcast from there. We have a podcast called Democracy Cast. Once again, you're going to hear guests that you won't hear anywhere else. Um, po our podcast, Democracy Cast, is available on all of the major podcast providers. So Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, Libsyn, it's everywhere. Um, so just look for Democracy Cast. Um, and we did a two-part interview. I did a two-part interview with Greg Pallas, the award-winning investigative journalist who's written for Rolling Stone and The Guardian and a lot of other great places about vote suppression uh, in the United States. So very cutting-edge, important stuff, you know, dealing with threats, major threats to democracy. Um, let me think if there's anything else. Uh, yeah, that covers it for now, I guess. You know, there's some other great alternative media, of course, out there, and I can talk about that on future um, videos. But I wanted to go ahead and give you an idea here of what my testimony was today. Uh, for the Washington State Legislature about House Bill 2009, 2009. and um, you know there, I also was uh, I also testified today for this before the Seattle City Council, uh, before the full council, and I can give you that testimony as well. But first, let me uh, talk about House Bill 2009, which is about a guaranteed basic income. And, um, you know, it's a major issue for uh, us in Washington State because there's a lot of poverty here and there are all sorts of issues that I've talked about with the fact that we don't have a state income tax, that our, um, our the sales tax in Seattle is 10%, which of course, you know, affects mostly working class and poor people because, you know, the billionaires, they can afford to pay it, but everybody else, you know, uh, has a really hard time, you know, you have to tack on 10% to everything you buy because we don't have a state income tax, so the only way that they can fund things is by these huge um, sales taxes. Um, so, you know, it's, it's basically the whole tax system, the most regressive in the United States, is stacked for, you know, the benefit of rich people in Washington State. So, um, and by the way, you know, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but just this, the lack of civics education in the United States is just intolerable. I mean, D 
do you even know what legislative and congressional district you live in? Do you know who your congresswoman or congressman is? Uh, do you know who your legislative representatives are? Because they are supposed to be the elected officials who are responsive to your requests for information and assistance. So if you have an issue in your community, um, uh, you have, you're having problems, you know, contact them. Uh, that's what they're there for. They get elected to help you. You're their constituent. They're your representative in this so-called democracy. But here's my testimony before the Housing and Human Services Committee for the Washington State Legislature today. My name is Mark Taylor Canfield. I serve as executive director for uh, the nonprofit news organization Democracy Watch News. I'm speaking in favor today of House Bill 2009 establishing the Evergreen Basic Income Trust. I live in Seattle in the 43rd Legislative District. At Democracy Watch News, we cover pro-democracy movements around the world. And in my journalism, I found that no democracy can survive when poverty and homelessness are the main concern of a large portion of the population. These economic stresses inevitably lead to lower voter turnout and a lack of civil engagement because a person's first priority, of course, is providing for their families and for themselves. The resulting mental and physical stresses and the physical and mental health crises that result make it very difficult for people to be um, informed, proactive members of the community. In many areas of the country, only 40% of eligible voters bother to cast their votes, calling into question whether we actually have a functioning democracy in this country when only a minority of the population actually votes and elections are dominated by well-funded political campaigns often sponsored by wealthy corporate interests. Meanwhile, billionaires like Elon Musk, and in particular Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Howard Schultz, who live in Washington State, continue to accumulate more wealth than anyone has ever imagined was even possible, making more money per minute than most working people make in an entire year, even in the middle of an economic crisis and pandemic, these billionaires are thriving, while the rest of us suffer. Washington State itself is suffering from a serious lack of affordable housing in our cities and we're burdened with the most regressive tax system in the entire country. So we owe it to residents of our state to provide a basic income so that people can be lifted out of poverty and can enjoy at least the basic minimum quality of life that Washington State um, can provide. I'm also convinced that crime rates will be lowered, mental and physical health uh, will improve across the state and at least some of the people living in the houseless tent communities in our major cities will finally have a chance to make a decent life for themselves and their children because let's face it no matter how many social services we offer people without a basic income people are still going to be left without adequate financial resources to cope in today's economy which is stacked for the benefit of the rich the nation of Norway currently provides a basic universal income for people living in that country, and I think it would greatly improve people's lives here in Washington State. Thank you for listening. So that was my testimony um, about universal basic income to the Washington State uh, Committee on Housing and Human Services and Veterans. Actually, it's the whole name of that committee. And that is a, a bill that's in committee right now, and... Unfortunately, because of the obstructionism practiced by the Republicans earlier today, uh, it wasn't able to go forward to be voted on for um, the in entire state legislature to take up. Hopefully that will happen soon. Um, but the Republicans who, as I said, have a minority um, on that uh, committee knew that their, none of their amendments for this whole other bill, it had nothing to do with this bill, but this whole other bill about you know, landlords giving tenants more notice before they um, give them extreme rate, uh, extreme rent increases. Um, they kept arguing against that and trying to add uh, amendments, knowing that they would all be voted down, but just hoping to obstruct the process and take up as much time as they could, which they were successful in doing, so that this basic income um, bill never came to the floor. The other uh, issue that we were dealing with today is about... Um, the Starbucks workers in Seattle who are trying to organize. Um, and that's been a major issue because the uh, because the Starbucks, the company, has made it very difficult for them. And by the way, just as a side issue, um, I don't know if I mentioned this. Oh, I'm getting a call from, ah, from my friend Jeff in Boston about the show, but I'll 
I'll let him know <laughs> with my message here that we are doing a live stream right now and I and I can't speak to him although it'd be great to have him on this live stream too and some at some point we will do that um, anyway uh, Amazon is being investigated by the National Labor Relations Board for anti-labor practices in New York um, and we also saw that in Alabama and as I mentioned maybe earlier I'm not sure uh, Amazon also um, has been uh, a real problem in Seattle as they tried to fight the uh, corporate tax um, to provide money for affordable housing that tax was actually passed by the by the city council and then rescinded like two weeks later I think everyone voted against their own vote rescinded their own vote except for maybe our democratic socialist Shama Sawant a uh, member of the Alternative Socialist Party, or the, excuse me, the Socialist Alternative Party, and um, she is actually the, the the council member who has put forth this resolution about uh, supporting the Starbucks workers in their attempts to organize. But she's also been behind the fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage, which went national. Um, she was also uh, able to get um, an extension on the moratorium on evictions here during the the pan pandemic and economic crisis in Seattle. So she's often out there working hard for uh, poor folks and the and the working folks in the city, but she's always attacked by conservative business interests, and they just ran a very expensive recall campaign against her, threw millions of dollars, a lot of out of state money at her to try to defeat her, defeat her, but she won. She was actually able. She has a national and international following now. So she was able to raise enough money to actually fight back and win that recall election. Um, and I, as I say, you know, these corporations, they should just leave her alone because every time they try to defeat her, um, she just ends up getting more publicity and becomes more famous internationally and gains more political strength and credibility. So if that were them, I, they were, I would just back off, leave her alone. Um, she was also supporting the carpenters, uh, the building construction industry carpenters who went on strike this last summer. They were also complaining that you know they didn't make enough wages, enough wages to be able to afford to live in the city where they work, which is what's happening with Starbucks um, employees right now. Um, so I also uh, I also testified today for that particular um, issue. And I'll just read to you what I said today on that. Um, it's it's testimony that uh, I I came up with, and you know I, I think I talked about this before. I'm not sure about you know why I was a journalist uh, testifying uh, before uh, city councils and the state legislature, and it's because you know in, in my work as a journalist, I often interview people, and visit them at their workplaces or their homes, and can see with my own eyes and hear with my own ears how they're suffering and what they need from public officials in order to help them survive. And so um, I do sometimes testify uh, in, during uh, hearings on issues that I think are important either uh, for democracy or basically for um, you know working people, middle class people, folks who don't have the the million dollar public relations firms and the high priced corporate lawyers to fight for them you know the uh, the corporate people and the uh, billionaires they don't need my help so I I they don't need my advocacy but uh, our job is to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted which means give a voice to those who have no voice and by the way democracy watch news has done an excellent job of that on the Twitter spaces events on Twitter if you follow Twitter um, working with activists and journalists in Africa about threats to democracy there and what's been happening in Ethiopia with the uh, Tigray genocide with uh, the coup uh, in um, several places in Africa right now um, including Su Su the Sudan uh, Nigeria um, uh, the Gambia uh, Burkina, Faso, uh, uh, Burkina Faso a lot of these places have major threats to democracy and coups, military coups happening right now. So we've been able to bring on people who you won't ever hear in corporate media in the United States to talk about these issues and what's really happening um, in their own communities. And so a shout out to the people who have been able to do that and who've worked with us on that.